watching the Tanya Mulling Show and welcome to the Her Network on Zinco TV channel 251. You can also see the show on Barnburner TV Network on channel 250 on Zinco TV. Please remember to download both the Barnburner and Zinco TV apps in their respective app stores on iOS and Android devices. While you're there, please make sure you rate and leave a comment. Both apps are free. Zinco TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire and Fire TV Sticks, Ruko and Ruko Sticks, also on all smart TVs 2016 and forward. And tonight I have on the show singer, songwriter, producer, Broadway star, three time Grammy Award winner, 20 million albums sold worldwide. The legend himself, John Cicada, is here. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. I mean, the history that you've done in this industry and still a still current, still strong. I mean, I got to ask you first, how does it feel? I'm sure you're not on lockdown, but you are, but you're still staying busy. How are you managing in this COVID and this situation? Well, it's been challenging for all of us, obviously worldwide, um, uh, especially for entertainers. And we do the best that we can staying connected through projects uh, virtually and what have you, but it's, um, it's a challenge, but you know, we're, we're challenged before anything else. We challenge is the fact that we're dealing with a health crisis. So at the end of the day, everything else is secondary, but it's been uh, definitely, it's been a, a tough year for all of us, hasn't it? Yeah. For the music industry, we're all feeling that. And it's like, um, but I, I, for myself, I found that I became more creative being at home um, because your mind is going through so much, you know, you start thinking about what more can you do and stuff like that. So it's like, what is your current projects that you're working on right now? Well, the projects that, um, that I started at the beginning of the year, that's what I'm trying to figure out at this point, how to promote them. Now that we're yeah. towards the end of the year, maybe there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, uh, so to speak into next year and, and maybe have the opportunity to, to travel. I mean, some of the, some of the things that I started off doing, we, we went as far as we could virtually, uh, honestly, and and uh, and through promoting different things uh, in the internet. But uh, at this point, I'm ready. Uh, we're ready with a couple of these things that I that I had started. We were ready to kind of, you know, to travel whenever, whenever. Obviously, the opportunity is there that is safe, and and uh, and that all of us can travel safely around the world. So. Yeah, it's so frustrating because it's we can't even say when. You know what I mean? Like you said. You've done all the virtual stuff. It's like, okay, that's played out now. What next? You know what I mean? So I totally understand that. I want to talk about um, the beginning, how you uh, started the music and how you came about in it. Yeah, I mean, my career um, started uh, in, in education. I mean, I'm a product of uh, education. I, uh, I, I got into music in high school. Uh, and I decided to go to college and I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in music and uh, in jazz performance, jazz music. And that was a big, big part for me, a uh, big part for my career uh, in terms of uh, where I'm at right now and everything that I've done. There's everything that, uh, uh, everything and, ev and everybody that was a part of, uh, uh, of the beginning of, uh, of what I started to do once I started to work here in Miami is because of guys that I used to went to college with you know, that, that, that I studied with colleagues. And, and um, so that was, that was it. My beginnings were, were grounded as a musician, mm -hmm. as, a, as a studio guy, working here in Miami, working the clubs. I was also a teacher. Um, so I did a little bit of everything. Uh, and, uh, and that let me eventually, the, having the opportunity to meet Emilio Estefan, Gloria Estefan, uh, and I worked with them for 18 years, uh, but those beginnings, um, those beginnings in education and working here in, in, the, in South Florida, that was uh, that's that was the real beginning for me. Kind of uh, that's where, where I really feel that I got grounded as to uh, the opportunities I was able to get afterwards. Yeah, and you say that you started like in school and it, it, it's in you, but did it come from a family member? Your music. I, I, I think so. I think from my father's side, I, I, uh, I had an aunt in Cuba that was a very well-known singer in the fifties and sixties. And, um, and I guess I never, I never explored it till I was in high school, kind of the idea that I could sing. I felt that I could, but I was very shy, very introverted. 
um, but once I got into it, I never looked back. So, uh, yeah. and I and I did. That's that's why I feel so strongly about education. So I was I was encouraged by my high school music teacher to to kind of go for it and to and to follow what she felt was something that I could really uh, follow my dreams, so to speak, and whatever I did in music. And um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it definitely started with an inheritance. I think from my father's side of the family. Okay, I'm smiling because your story sounds very similar to mine growing up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, oh my gosh. So in school, because normally when we're in the arts, you're artsy and always, did you do acting in school as well or that came later on? Uh, very little. I mean, the acting that I did in college was attached to um, musical reviews, maybe some operettas and things, but uh, only when I graduated did I maybe start to dabble a little bit in it, but I never really did any... Uh, any concrete acting. Um, so eventually I got the opportunity to go to Broadway later on in my career. So everything in the beginning was uh, was uh, attached to uh, songwriting, production, uh, uh, studio work, uh, and, uh, and teaching. And so I did, I dabbled into all those things all at once. Yeah, I wanna talk about your days with Gloria Estefan, of course. And uh, before we get into that, you wrote the song Coming Out of the Dark, co-wrote that song with her. That song is like amazing. I get goosebumps Thank every you. time I hear that song. Thank uh, you. Last, uh, well, that song was the beginning of everything for me as a songwriter in terms of getting, uh, getting recognized and noticed by the record companies. Um, uh, it was a big song for her, a comeback song. You know, she yeah. just had gone through this horrific uh, uh, accident yeah, uh, God, I know. And, um, okay. So that that record was a big, big record for her. I, I co-wrote that song with her and Emilio Stefan and also other songs that were a part of that project. And I toured with her attached to that particular project. So yes. that that song, that song and everything that came from it really was uh, was kind of like the my stepping stone to really the beginning of my solo career. Yeah, I was going to say, was that when it started for you to go solo? I think so, because then the record companies uh, noticed me, Gloria Stefan, gave me the, an opportunity in her show to have a song by myself. Yeah. Uh, and so the record companies started to put all the, they started to put all the dots together. And, and, um, and I finally got my chance during, during that tour, uh, after writing that song and then working on some other demos and things. I mean, I, I had been working on songs for years, but nothing had clicked. Yeah, until, nothing hit them. Nothing had clicked until um, we we came about writing that song, I toured with Gloria, and then the songs that I wrote during that tour, that really was uh, the, the, the big songs in my career that were a part of my first album. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny how you say that because a lot of people think just because you're there, with Gloria that it's gonna boom tomorrow. It just happens for other people, right. but it's nice that people know the story. It doesn't just happen like that, you know? Like you said, you were no. writing and writing and not getting that break, right? No, it was a five year overnight success. That was my thing. It, was, <laughs> it yeah. took me five years to get the opportunity. Eventually after writing songs and doing things and working in the studio and doing production work and uh, to actually come up with something that, that uh, I guess the chemistry being right just then the labels or the, the label that signed me, they, they recognized it, so. Yeah, okay. So when did you get the, as you said, you were writing, did you write at that time for Ricky Martin and J-Lo, was that when the writing was going on or did that come later to also write for those artists? No, that came much later, much later in my career. Once my career had already uh, had been going for a while, um, that's when I got the opportunity to work, work and write for these other artists. And uh, I never stopped writing, even when my, my, uh, my own career had, was going on and I was touring and I was, uh, and I was uh, getting a lot of success uh, as me as a solo artist. I still, in the studio, I kept writing and working all the time, whether it was for me or, or, or other artists. And that's, that's when I got the opportunity to, to to connect with uh, Ricky, to connect with, uh, with J-Lo and, and other artists like Mandy Moore at the time. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it was, again, for me, the, 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 that blue collar mentality of, of being in the studio, working all the time, uh, yeah. especially when I was off the road and writing songs, that was something that, 
that I never um, that never left me. It never has actually. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, how does okay? You so you're doing your own solo stuff, and were you signed to the record company at that once you got the song with um, like the rec recognition from being with? I keep getting an interruption. Up right yeah, now. I just, I just uh, apologize. <laughs> Somebody keeps calling me. Oh, I apologize. Yes. So, then did you go on to um, doing your solo stuff and working on your project? That's when they gave it all the, the opportunity to do your own thing, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I, that's uh, and it happened towards, I would say, towards the middle, the middle of Glorious Tour. I would come home and I was uh, working with a. Uh, uh, a songwriter producer friend of mine that I went to high school with and and we came up with a collection of songs the first one being just another day which was my first hit both English and Spanish and then after yeah. that it everything clicked you know we, we established a sound uh, and the first set of demos included that song and that's what the label heard and at that point that's when they really connected all the dots I was touring with Gloria they heard this just story. another day you said yeah just another day okay and uh, you know, it was the first song that I wrote for my first project. Um, and uh, while I was touring with Gloria. And um, so, yeah, that was that was it. That was it. I mean, and by the end of the tour with Gloria, I already had gotten my, my record deal. That was uh, so everything wow. really came together nicely in that way. Yeah, she must have been so happy for you. No, she was. And she oh. a star in every sense of the word. She gave me so much of her of her time on stage and always uh, was very supportive uh, since day one. And I will always appreciate that. Yes, a lot of artists aren't like that. A lot of artists don't want to share their shine. No, you but she, she, she did and I, God bless I her. love her for that, I always will. Yeah, I totally understand. So how, you have duets with Jim Brickman. Yes. Uh, and no, Olivia, that, that was great, that was great working yeah, with Jim. Talk about John Brickman first. I'm sorry? You can talk about uh, the John Brickman. Oh. I went to the next before you got a chance to say anything. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah no. no Jim, is, Jim is great. He's such a great musician and also such a, uh, a, a, a smart musician, such a really, uh, he's so intuitive about music and what he likes and who he, how he works with other people. And, and that's something that I really, really enjoyed. I really enjoyed working with him and, and, uh, and we connected right away. And, it was it was it was great. It was really a great experience. Nice and Olivia Newton John. Oh, uh, Olivia, she's uh, an icon. Uh, what can yeah. I tell you? I was uh, to work with her, have the opportunity to to be uh, on the stage with her, to record with her. Again, that's uh, it's one of those artists that uh, in the history of, of popular music is going to be just she's up there. You know, she's one of the one of the big ones. Yeah, and of course, Frank Sinatra. That oh, was Sinatra. nice. <laughs> yeah, the Sinatra duet was interesting because I, my, um, I was in the middle, I guess, maybe uh, of doing my second CD, and mm -hmm. I get this opportunity of the call to, to be a part of this record. And I, uh, again, uh, the, the ultimate icon was Sinatra in terms of uh, his, his history, and, uh, and even as a musician, you know, he's respected across the board in the pop yeah. industry, the jazz industry. Sinatra is just one of those artists that had this, um, this universal music uh, respect uh, from everybody. And, um, and uh, to have my name next to his, to sing a song with him was, was tremendous. And uh, The Best Is Yet To Come, that's the song that we did. It was, what an experience. And Phil Ramon, uh, was the producer of the project and who also produced my first couple of si singles and my first CD. He yeah. put that record together and I will never, I'll always be thankful to Phil and the record company too for, uh, let, uh, I guess, bringing, bringing my name up to uh, Mr. Sinatra and he agreed to, uh, to, uh, to do a duet with me. That was on the debut album, you said? That yeah. was the, the, Sin the Sinatra uh, duet, uh, record the duet that i did was was on his second duet album he did uh two or three i believe before he passed away um wow. and it was on the second duet album with him nice 
And we can't leave out, you toured with Luciano Pavarotti. Hello. Well, I did a, a one show with him that was amazing. It was uh, a show in his hometown. He would do this uh, benefit show every year, a different yeah. class. Uh, 120 piece orchestra, sing with him, next to him. Uh, again, I, I haven't been nervous in my life very much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I can kind of one hand, I mean, it does have been really nervous. And that was one of them, like right? to be next, next, right next to him singing with him. That was, that was something else. And he was, again, such a, a giving uh, a performer, so intuitive, so into making sure that I, that I sounded good. And, yeah. um, and I will always, I will always remember that. I never forget that. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, you're a powerhouse and your range is amazing. But I mean, when you hear that, do you not feel as an artist, you get nervous, but it, you also feel like it brings so much out of you, like, you know, because you give so much of yourself after hearing him, like, wow, you know? Yeah, and the, and the song, we did a piece called Granada together, and uh, it's a very difficult classical type of uh, piece. And I was, uh, I was shaking, I really was, but I made it, you know, and, and, um, uh, Again, I, every time I look at the tape of that performance, I, I just wonder how I got through it, but you know, it worked that good. Yeah, nice memories. I got to bring up one since we're talking about performance that I saw when I was scrolling on your Instagram when you sang, uh, I think it was Angel, is that the title of the song? In, yes. Uh, and, and there's a little clip and Michael's watching. That was such a nice clip. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that when I saw them. You see the little, you know, Michael gives a little nod. Not that you need approval, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, tell me the the what it meant to you because of the clip that you post. That's why I bring that up. Yeah, it's it's only later that I get the, that I get the opportunity to kind of see those things and uh, yeah, uh, and oppor opportunity situations that that really were where I've been a part of my. Uh, almost 30 year career and as a solo artist that um, are, have been amazing. Yeah, because you're all the same, but it, I know what you mean. Like you're at the same level as all of them, but it's just when it comes from him, you know, no matter where you are, he's the king of no, pop, right? So it's all icon. icons. Yeah, I mean, exactly. There, like, you know, you know. There's, there's, so, there's so many artists, but there's just obviously a, a pool of artists that are really icons and, and that have broken records, set the mark. Uh, and, uh, and Michael is one of them as well, so. Yeah, and and you're one of them. Like you said, you went on tour with Gloria and then you get your first album, get your first record deal. Debut album, John Cicada, six million copies, certified triple platinum in the US, number 15 on Billboard, pop album chart. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I uh, my debut album, album. <laughs> my debut album was, uh, to me, was the, the sweetest surprise to, to, to have that kind of success. Again, yeah. it took me five years working with the Estefans to get to that point, but um, by seeing, realizing that success with that record, just, it was amazing. And I, um, uh, again, I couldn't have done it without the Estefans and, and all, and, and actually maybe without, without experiencing those five years, because I, that's, I think that's what gave me the, the growth process to, to get to that point that we came up with those songs and we knew exactly, I knew exactly what I thought, you know, that we that we needed for to uh, to get noticed and and it worked out. Yeah, and then even the success of that album, you were able to do a Spanish version of it, right? Correct. Yes. And then yes. Latin about 1992, it earned you the first Grammy Award for Best Latin Pop Album. Three more top. Two, three more top 20 billboard hits, Angel, I'm Free, and Do You Believe in Us? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, uh, I remind the Spanish you album was, I have to the remind Spanish, you. Was, really done. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Spanish album was, uh, it, it's, uh, it's interesting how it came to be because I, I, I got signed to sing in English originally. I never, when Emilio Stefan presented me to the, to the label, it was not for me to sing in, uh, in Spanish, even though my yeah. first language is Spanish. Um, and, uh, but obviously I grew up in South Florida, Miami is so bilingual, Spanish is uh, my first language eventually, even though my music was represented more in English and everything, 
but I, I grew up bilingually, grew up writing and singing in both languages. And uh, yeah. so, but uh, Emilio Stefan, he actually talked the, the record company into, into um, letting me record in Spanish. Uh, he told yeah. him like, look, at the end of the day, this guy is, he's really, you know, Hispanic. And so, and we, what we did, it was basically, we translated all the songs um, and I, again, it was a, a blessing and, and, a, and a tremendous thing that was a part of my career at the moment because it, it just added so much depth to the fact that I could, my career, besides the, all the places I was traveling in, uh, in the Anglo world, then I started to travel all over Latin America and, and Spain and what have you. And so um, I owe a lot to the opportunity to sing in Spanish and the fact that I, uh, my, my roots, my tradition, my, my first language and and the fact that I was, I did the crossover the other way around. I mean, I, I started in English first and then crossed over to see Spanish. Yeah, so that was good for him to do that. So the, the first, the first, um, the English version of it, it didn't get the Grammy. Correct me if no, I'm wrong. No, it was the actual, it was it was Spanish, Spanish version. version. Isn't yeah. that something? Best, best pop. Isn't that, don't you find that weird me. though that you can put it out in English? And did it get nominated for a Grammy though? Uh, I got nominated for best new artist in the uh, as a, as an English, you know, as a, yeah, as an Anglo act, best new artist. Yeah. But the actual the record that got but you know best pop um, record was for the Latin version of it. And also, I mean, I got that record produced uh, four number one hits in the Latin market. I mean, I again, it was and it was an afterthought. You know that was that's what makes it even sweeter, and I yeah. But that's, the, that's, the, that's sometimes that's the you know the magic of this industry. You never know how things are going to work out until you you uh, uh, you work through the process of of doing what you what you feel is the right thing to do, and and yeah. uh, exactly Emilio believed in it, and and he pushed it, and and it worked out. Yeah, I just say that now because my viewers, so they know, like you put out an English album or the same thing, and you go and put it in the Spanish, and you win. That's just that's uh you know you never know what's going to happen like you said and yeah, then you yeah it's crazy eh? <laughs> um your second album talk a little bit about that yeah the second album um was a, another platinum selling album i also had a a, a top you know top 10, top 10 hit if, if you go out of that record yeah. and with that record i got the opportunity to do a, my first world tour and um okay. and it was great it was great it was uh Again, the, the record company was behind me 100%. And, um, and you know, the sophomore, what they call this, the sophomore re record, some, sophomore jinx, it's really difficult because, you know, you, you spend so much time thinking about what to do with your first album. And then the second album is, is you have to do it a lot faster. Um, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you end up kind of rushing through things and not spending as much time deciding on the, the right songs but uh but it worked out and we had a, a you know big success with that excuse me with that record and uh and, and I, I love the fact that then i gave that gave me more opportunities to do other things in my career i mean the success of the second album i think that's what solidified the uh the opportunity to do the the duet with frank sinatra nice. the opportunity to go to broadway and the opportunity to kind of start to uh, to go ahead and, and get different type of uh, showcases and and uh, in collaborations that otherwise, if it hadn't been for the success of the second record, uh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gotten those opportunities. Nice. And uh, the third one, the third album, it was Grammy award winning album. That was was that Spanish, the second? also in Spanish? Yeah, in Spanish. Yeah. Uh, so it's and, like, what is it? Tell me this, sir, because I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're telling me now every time that you received the Grammy, it was the Spanish albums? Correct. That were the ones that were yep. making the impact? It wow. Was, it okay. was always for, the, like, for, for the, uh, a Latin record, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. only ask this because it, in English, because I said, like, we spoke before we came on air to my viewers. I said, I'm not too good with the Spanish. Uh, right, right. <laughs> lingo, but I'm just saying, like, I didn't know that myself. And your English ones were so big, those songs. That's why I'm, I'm this is news to me. You know what I mean? No, yeah. And, that, and that's the reason that my career, I feel so blessed because uh, all these other successes that I've had, 
and the, the accolades and the, and the awards really came from uh, outside of the American Music Awards. I got the um, uh, an American Music Award for best uh, best contemporary uh, best adult contemporary artist uh, uh, after the first record. Yeah. And um, it, it, but all the other accolades and, and awards came because of, of my Latin career. They really truly did. It was all the and even my third Grammy that I, we just got maybe a couple of years ago. It was also for uh, a Spanish record. So that was was it a a more. Yeah, no, no, Amor was the second, uh, the second um, Grammy. The third okay. Grammy uh, is for a project that just uh, that I did a couple of years back. Uh, it was a tribute to a, a tribute to a a, uh, uh, a tropical singer from the '40s uh, in Cuba, '40s and '50s. Benny Mori, that's his name. And, okay. And we did, uh, it's a big band project. It was, um, and we you uh, redid the tracks, right? You did the tracks and you did them like the original, or tried to keep correct, it close to the correct, original. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it was uh, and another project in Spanish. So, again, yeah. my career in Spanish has been something that, uh, again, is just give me so much depth to everything that I've done. Yeah, talk about some of the current Latin songs you're doing, so you can pronounce them for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, the, the the one. Well, I just finished doing a track at the beginning of the year. We were in the process of of um, of recording a song. Uh, it was a collaboration record with a really okay. well-known uh, Mexican artist, uh, uh, Samo, and uh, and a group from Spain, and and uh, the song is called Playa o Montaña, uh, beach or mountain. Okay. And uh, and you know we we did again we did the best that we could, and uh, we we're able to record it right before things got a little bit hairy because of the because of the yeah. pandemic. Um, yeah. And we were able to kind of promote a little bit of it over the internet, but we couldn't do much, much more other than that. And and I was supposed to actually do another song, uh, and going back to Spain. That's where the whole thing originated with my, uh, with my representatives there. But we couldn't, we couldn't go any further because, of course, we, you know, it's tough to travel right now. But, uh, but yeah, and I'm looking forward to God willing to going back to Spain. Maybe after things open up at the beginning of next year to continue. Uh, um, kind of following what we did with that song and that collaboration and, and do something else and, and see what happens. Yeah, you talk about, like you've done collaborations with people and I know you're very, uh, you're good at writing and producing and everything yourself, but is there anybody that you would like to work with producer-wise? I know you got that in your belt already, you know what you're doing, but is there anybody that if you had a chance to work with, to produce with, um, who would you want to work with? No, nobody in particular. I mean, I, I, there's there's so much brand new music that comes out that uh, it really comes from uh, uh, just artists that are, are working on, and, and they themselves are working with young young production talent that that yeah. I'm not even aware of. And so, um, I mean, and once when my career got going, I got the opportunity to work with who I felt was the top. The top producers at the time, and I actually I seek to work with them. I, I remember when I did the third record in English, I went to the label and they uh, they asked me if it like exactly what you just said. You know, who would you if yeah. you wish who would you like to you know produce and, and write with and work with? And I yeah. and I told Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis because they were yeah, yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> I've done all these records with Janet Jackson and and uh, so I. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've gotten my share of, of being able to do that and and work yeah. with some great engineers and some great people that uh, whether it is because I, I've made the connection myself or even the, or maybe the producer or the artist or the engineer wants to work with me and and that's yeah. always an amazing thing. Yeah, the, the doors are always open for you because of what oh, yeah. you've done. And so. I'm always open myself too. I'm yeah. always open for suggestions because that's the only way I feel that I can grow and I can actually, uh, my career has been based on that too. It's always based my, my career on, on kind of being a chameleon to working with people, accepting yeah. the different musical styles, um, making them my own. Um, yeah. So I, I really, I really enjoy that. Yeah. And of course, we already said you work with the best of the best. Is there anybody that you would like to collab with vocally, a duet that you haven't? Like you said, you got I, you got the list already. I don't know if there's any other ones. 
No, you know, there's, I mean, there's, uh, there's, uh, in the Latin music industry, there's, uh, uh, the, the, the music, the Latin music industry has changed so much. And there's some, there's some great new artists that are, that are doing some great work, I feel. And, and of course, it all deals with like the, the reggaeton, the whole trap type of yeah. sound that's going on right now. And so I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of, of Bad Bunny, which is, you know, an artist that is, it's, it's in my opinion, I, I really respect his productions and, and what he does and, and how, he, uh, how he goes about, you know, the, mix, the mixing of the reggaeton with the way that he sings and sounds very universally kind of right for everybody to, to appreciate it. And, uh, and so that's, that's one artist I think that I would love to do some with because I really like, again, as a, as a new artist, somebody that's yeah. on the edge of doing something different. Yeah, so you're saying for him to produce with you or you work with him like well, producing? Whatever, what, whatever, Either he way. Want, whatever you want to do. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so that's the only, right. like I always wonder because like you're, you've been in the game for a long time and like myself too, I'm always reaching out to help other artists because they've been here so long like you that's what i mean do you ever feel like you sit back and go man because we all know it it doesn't come overnight it takes work and there's a lot of artists i'm sure you see yourself out there that you think god if they just had that little help along the way i could maybe get them to hear you know you ever see that yeah. in anybody out there oh well, yeah i i did a i did a um a tv show for about four years i did the um I did the Latin version of American Idol. It was called Latin yeah. American. Yeah. And we, uh, we worked out of Argentina. Yeah. But we traveled all over Latin America, uh, looking yeah. for talent and auditioning people. And, and uh, we came across so much talent, so much talent. So I, and I remember, obviously, in, uh, in, the, in, in the crossroads of meeting all these, all these kids, I guess helping them because they would ask me, you know, kind of directing uh, how to how to go about go to, to the next level, especially maybe if if they didn't get that far into the into the into the show. Um, and uh, so four years, four years of listening to so much talent, it was amazing. Yeah. There's there's so much talent out there, and um, and uh, for me as an educator and as a producer, that's something that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed doing the show, and I enjoyed kind of being a mentor, I guess, so to speak, yeah. to a lot of kids. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you, you try to help everybody, but uh, it's impossible to help everybody. But it's like, when you see that special one, like you hear so many on the shows out there that they end up leaving there, maybe being a background singer for like a bigger artist, right. and that's how they get their little breakthrough, you know, whatever you can do. It's like, it takes that one opportunity for that person, and, and they would have never gotten there if they haven't met you or gone on these shows that's why a lot of people don't realize what these shows yeah. really do for some of these artists well absolutely most yeah. certainly and i you know the television has changed television has changed everything being visible has changed everything in terms of who you are as a recording artist and yeah and, you know 50 seconds of of, uh, of visibility goes a long way it does oh, and, yeah and if you can work yeah. with it that's amazing yeah it's social media too nowadays it's yeah. so different now that's How do you feel? Everybody. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, it's, you, you said a social media is uh, is a new wave of marketing and promotion that that uh, we got to work with, that we got to embrace. I mean, it's it's a part of of, uh, of the how we connect with people. Period. So, uh, and uh, and that's great, and that's great. That's become that way. That's a, that's what um, communication is all about. And it's supposed to evolve and change, and and we're at that point that social media has become that that uh, that platform so yeah it's good but i think some artists don't realize that i mean not all of them up and coming artists have the back backing of money in that i'm talking to you because you can give them some knowledge in this a lot of them feel like um a little post and that's it that to for them to get where they want to get they kind of have to have a team around them you know yeah, and you i do. don't think some of they don't understand the importance of that to get to where they got to get I agree. At the same time, you know, there's so much you can do independently these days. And that's something that I always tell, uh, uh, especially now, now more than ever, new artists. I mean, that uh, there's a lot that you can actually research on your own to yeah. promote and work out um, whatever you want to, to uh, showcase your music. And, and in the end, once it's out there, yeah. then 
it, it's it's out there, and you and you gotta, and 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 that's the and that's the beauty of of the of the internet. That's the beauty of social media. That's the beauty of of yeah. uh, of of the, the way that we connect with people these days. And and there is a way to 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 go to go far on your own. And eventually, yeah. of course, you need help. You need if you need education. You need guidance. But uh, but you can go a long way by figure things out and, and researching it and and um, and uh, and that's the beauty of of uh, of, uh, of social, social media. media yeah I say one button and it goes up on all these platforms people don't need two, two, three. you lie down in your bed and social media is done <laughs> that, is right. that is correct <laughs> it's so true and you also did other shows as well dancing with the stars you got moves well, in, in Spanish, yes, I did the Latin version of it. It was great. I, I got I got hurt as a result of it, but uh, <laughs> you got moves. You, know, you better if you got Latin Spanish and you got to shake something, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I I wish I hadn't gotten hurt. I, I busted my knee pretty bad. And, oh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it, you know, it's it was a long time ago. So, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but you know, the, again, opportunities and things that that were that were fun, and I really enjoyed them and. Uh, and I'm glad that they were part of my career. That's nice, eh? And then you also have a Miami-based music lounge. Talk a little bit about that. Well, actually, that uh, that ended a couple of years ago, but that yeah. was, a, again, business opportunities that have, that have come my way based on living here in South Florida. I take these opportunities uh, as, they, as they come because it's a blessing to be able to enjoy them. And, um, and it was a great partnership uh, yeah. That was uh, actually that was uh, the the first time, the first or second time, second time that I sang with Olivia and John. It was it was okay. in, in in that in that venue uh, that I was partners with, and it's great. You know, I live in a community that has brought me so much and uh, and so many great uh, great relationships, and that's I guess really that's the best way to put it. Is is the opportunity to to enjoy all these great relationships. Yeah. What song do you think, um, I know you got a lot of hits, but what one would you say is your favorite song? I know everybody says it's hard to pick a favorite because you've had a lot of hits, but what one really resonates with you? Um, I got to say Just Another Day. I mean, Just Another Day is really, is, I consider it my anthem. It's a song that, um, that started everything for me in both languages. First song that I wrote for my first record, first hit that I ever had. And um, so it was the beginning of everything. It was the first song that the, the record company heard that they felt that they could promote. So if it hadn't been for that song, I, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I know it would not be. So I, I, I owe a lot to uh, being able to write, co-write that song with my best friend. Okay, let me ask you something. You like reggae music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, a birdie told me that you did that song over in reggae. I didn't hear it yet, though. We did, uh, we, did uh, uh, right. we did a, we did like a, 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 a reggae remix, so to speak. It was really, that's more of what it's like. But uh, and it was great. You know, that's a good thing when you have a song that maybe that works, uh, that people like. You can try it yeah. in different, different formats. I mean, that song has been done. I've done the, the, uh, multiple dance versions of it. It's been done in as a tropical mix. It's been done in so many formats, and I love it. I love the fact that once you have a song that people like, then you can try it out in different formats. Yeah, I need that reggae version for my radio show. <laughs> you can look it up. It's out there. You can look it up. It's out there. Gotta wheel it up. Yep. <laughs> okay. Do you remember who did the remix? I was wondering if I know them. No, I know. It's just a, a, a local producer. Here in Miami, that just wanted to kind of give it a give it a, a whirl, and I and I told him, sure, let me try it, try it, let me let me hear it. If I like it, then we can go for it. Okay, so it's just a remix. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, it's a remix. Oh, all right, nice. I want that one. I really, really want that. Um, okay. Do you really want me? Tell me the meaning behind that. I got to shout out Eduardo for setting this up. He's he's sending me little questions here and there for you. <laughs> And just seal, I have to say hi, girl. Thank you so much. Tell me a little bit behind that song. Well, the song is a, a part of my very first CD, and it was a, a part of the um, of the set of songs that I I almost wrote them like, really back to back. I mean, um, 
just another day, Angel, uh, I'm free. Do you believe in us? And do you really want me? I think it was the fifth song that I wrote for my first CD. Um, and, uh, you know, all these songs I wrote with the same guy, my best friend, my the songwriter that Miguel Morjan that I really, I owe the fact that we, we connected after, you know, uh, years of not seeing each other and after, you know, going to high school together. And, uh, and uh, all these songs came through conversations. You know, me and, me and Mike would just sit and talk about our lives, relationships, reflections of, of everything, observations of what was going on in ourselves. And, and then we'd come up with all these songs and, uh, and he always would play me like a, a sequence of something that he had been working on. And then I would listen to it and I might've had a lyric already for it. Maybe not, maybe I would just come up with the lyric on the spot after us talking and I would just start writing down, you know, lyric, lyric fragments and, and that's how that song came about. It was just, it, it came about through just, again, this sequence of songs that we we're doing uh, and that we felt really good about after we wrote Just Another Day. Okay. Um, what about Never, I'm Never Too Far Away? I'm Never Too Far Away. I did that with a great producer friend of mine, uh, Rudy Paris. He's got a career, an iconic career all, all, all his own. I mean, uh, he's uh, one of the most, in the Latin market, one of the most recognized producers ever. Uh, yeah. And I love him very much. And and I, I, I've known him for, for decades. And and uh, one day in the studio, he played me this track that he had this song that he had done. And and I fell in love with it. You know, it's, again, I, I always I always appreciate, especially me being a songwriter, a song that even if I don't write it, if it's a good song, uh, to to recognize it, obviously, to, to know it's a good song and to go for it, you know. And, and that's what I did with that song. Yeah, if I never knew you, love. love if I never knew you, you great opportunity. He's, never... Eduardo's sending me questions here, and I'm talking about something else. <laughs> All right. Now, if I never knew you was uh, the first, my first opportunity to do something with uh, with the Disney company. I mean, it was uh, it was a song, a part of the Pocahontas uh, soundtrack. Yeah, and I did it uh, in English and Spanish and Portuguese. Um, you gave me the opportunity to work with a great singer, Shanice. Uh, I love Shanice. And, and, oh. and a great Brazilian artist, Daniela Mercury. Nice. Uh, so I, amazing. And of course, working with, with the Disney company, so it was part of a great soundtrack. Um, and uh, I'm just happy that was, again, I was asked to be a part of it. Nice. That's. Uh, I want to go back to the soundtracks because we were talking about Pocahontas, but I wasn't finished what I was saying before. Never Too Far charted top 25 Billboard, and the video and single commemorated the 20th anniversary of your music career, right? And also yeah. the gold hit, Just Another Day. I had to say that, add that in. I don't know if we said that, <laughs> or you said that. <laughs> no, no, you, 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 you're saying it now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, wow, you know, that, that really, what, what, why I keep bringing that up? We keep saying just another day, just another day, but it's such a big part of your career and it's spanned throughout all these years and it's still going strong and not many people have that like music comes, it goes, it dies. And then you're moving on to the next thing. Like you can pull for that song and it's as strong today as it was yesterday. Thank God that people still enjoy that song, uh, both in English and Spanish. When I sing it live, it's still something that is a staple in my show. And um, yeah, you know, you, there's some songs that are really once in a lifetime songs. I think for me, for me in my career, that's one of them. I, again, if I hadn't been for that song, I, I wouldn't have the career that I've had. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Everybody wants that one song. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and talk about, again, we went back to Pocahontas, movie soundtracks. Of course, that was uh, uh, Disney's Pocahontas you worked right. on. You had songs, Empire. Empire, that, Specialist, yeah. Is that Empire or the show? No, Empire movie. It's a movie with, um, um, well, I forget the actor's name, but yeah, it was a movie, great movie. Uh, the Specialist was another movie that I was a part of that, that had a song in that movie. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Soundtracks are great. Again, you know, when you, yeah. you have, when you have the opportunity to connect a song that you do with visuals, with a scene or something, something that is visual. Uh, the videos, I mean, that's, the videos is a perfect, uh, is a perfect example of, of the importance of, of the, of, of what has become, right? For us to, to see, to see the image of, of a song as is connected with, uh, uh, you know, with something that, with a song with, with actual visuals of, of a, of a story or, or, a uh, or in a movie, like a scene or something, you know, so. Yeah, and Dance With Me, that one. Yeah, and Dance With Me, that was, that was a, a great opportunity for me to be a part of a, a soundtrack. I didn't write the song for that particular soundtrack, but what a beautiful song uh, produced yeah, by this. Yeah, I'm running them down to talk a bit about it. Yeah, ahead, I, love, I love that song. And it was in, featured in a wonderful scene in the movie and uh, uh, with Cheyenne and Vanessa Williams and uh, great opportunities that I've had and and to work with different producers over the country. I did that in Nashville, actually. I recorded that song in Nashville. Nice. Uh, and uh, I've done several projects in Nashville, actually. And that was one of them. Uh, Chasing Poppy. Huh? Yes, I know. Uh, that was another one. I, you know, I, I forget, I I forget how poppy. many. I said Poppy good, right? That sounded good. <laughs> I forget how many songs I've had in different, in different uh, movie, uh, uh, in different movies, uh, and sometimes I don't even. Sometimes it's just uh, it, there were songs that were submitted by my publisher, by yeah. my um, uh, by my management company, and then the the director and the movie they would they would enjoy the song, and and before I knew it, I, I you know the song was in the movie. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. yeah, because you don't know when you submit if it's going to be accepted. You no. just put it in there, and you never know, yeah, right? Yeah. Sometimes, it's like sometimes. sometimes. Yes, it's a hit or miss, you know, or what they need. And sometimes, well, sometimes it's worked out since the beginning, but sometimes it isn't, so. Yeah, uh, and what about Zorro? Oh, that was a, another great duet in Spanish with a great artist, uh, uh, a great Latin artist that I got the opportunity to do that with. Um, uh, and uh, uh, again, you know, opportunities. And I, and I owe that to, again, this, the Latin side of my career. I, again, if I hadn't done, if I hadn't had all, all those Latin uh, successes, I, had, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to have done all these, uh, all these songs and especially the Spanish versions of a lot of these songs. Yeah, is there any other ones that I missed there that you can think of? I don't think care if I can think you of said right many now. more you done because you got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything right now. No, not anymore. No, no. no. Is there any advice that you would give up up and coming artists in the industry? Um, well, just learn learn your craft. You know, learn learn as much as as, as much as you can as to what you want to do, because that's that 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 helps a lot. I mean, when you're uh, and you can do it um, through uh, formally if you want to go to college, you can do it you know privately through, through different private teachers if you want to. But knowing knowing what, what you're doing is, is it, it helps a lot in, in some type of apprenticeship program, whatever it might be. And I think it starts with that. After that, I think you know commitment, commitment, and and discipline, and sacrifice. Because any any career, as you as you know, it, without that, then you don't have the opportunity to really see see through, see see whatever you want to see it through all the way. Yeah. Uh, and and it's very easy to give up especially when you get disappointed or get discouraged. And um, so that kind of resiliency and, and uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of um, discipline and sacrifice. I mean, and then after that, just keep plugging away and, and, um, and make it a, you know, part of your work ethic. I mean, for me, that was always a thing. My, I, as, as passionate as I was about my career every day, I was also very, very in tune with, with the work ethic of, of doing it, even when sometimes I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's discipline. So that's, that's a part of the game. Yeah, and I, I always say to artists, you're going to hear a lot of no's on the way, so don't let that discourage you. You've got to keep going, and a lot of, you know, they have to understand that not everybody's going to like it, but if they believe in what they're doing, just keep going, you know? Correct, correct. Yeah. Um, 
and I, I want to talk about, I can't leave out the Broadway, Grease. That's one of my favorite. Danny Zuko, you played. Yeah, that was my, uh, my first Broadway show. And, um, and I was really proud of the, of, uh, really of the, the fact that well, my career was really happening at the time. But I was really proud of the producers of that show because uh, I was a Hispanic American doing uh, a really big show on Broadway. It was, at the time, it was the beginning of the whole Latin crossover. Not a lot of Latin artists doing that. And, and uh, I was one of the first ones to do it. And, and it was a great show, great music. Uh, so it was the first Latino, you know, Danny Zuko, so to speak, you know, doing that part. And, and uh, I love it. I love the fact that I had the opportunity to do that. And eventually I got the opportunity to do Cabaret. Yeah. A few years later, then I got a chance to do a tour of uh, Joseph and the Amazing Thing Color Dreamcoat. Nice. Uh, so I love theater. I learned so much from it. My daughter is starting musical theater. I think as a result of the fact that maybe uh, she remem remembers that that's what I used to do. Um, and she's having a gr great career of her own. She's almost done with college. Uh, and, um, but mus for musical theater is, it was an amazing experience. I will go back in a minute. Um, nothing has made me grow more as an artist than, than doing theater uh, as an entertainer. Uh, the stamina that you need yeah. to have is unlike anything else that I've ever done. Yeah, what do you like? I know artists are well-rounded. What do you prefer, performing as just the singer or the acting, or do you just love them all? Both, both, and that's what I've enjoyed, all, every opportunity that I've had to do all these different things, because it's, uh, at this point, it's a part of my resume of of just taking take, take, taking advantage of all these different things that came, you know, on my, on my lap, and I just, I love the fact that I was able to uh, to take advantage of them and enjoy them and and make them a part of my career. Nice. Um, I have to say before we get out of here, please talk about your humanitarian work, John Cicada Charities. Well, I've always been a part. I've always believed that uh, you know, being a celebrity, that there's a sense of responsibility for me when I'm asked to do something to be able to get something back, whether it's financially or through my talent. Um, I feel that it's, a, it's an extension of, uh, uh, of any, anybody, anybody who's a public figure. If you can, you know, try to be a good example, especially as a Hispanic American. Um, and, uh, and I've been involved in so many different uh, charity groups and, and help out as much as I can from the, uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation to, uh, to different AIDS organizations to uh, uh, different children's hospitals uh, here in Miami and uh, St. Jude, and so I, I just love the fact that I, I can give something back whenever I'm asked. Yeah, and you're recently honored for your ongoing efforts to raise awareness for hepatitis C as well. Correct, yes. and and, uh, and recently I got an award that was I, I was so flattered the uh, a humanitarian award the Muhammad Ali humanitarian award and nice. that, meant a lot, that meant a lot to me because he was a, uh, you know, one of the greatest civil rights, you know, uh, human lead, leaders in, in human history. So uh, amazing, amazing to be able to, uh, again, I'm, I'm humbled by all these, all these opportunities. That's so nice. John, we've come to the end of the show. I truly appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much for being here. No, thank you, Tanya. Thank you and everybody out there. And, and hopefully um, I can travel and, and see and spend time with everybody, all my fans that unfortunately I haven't been able to do that in a while. So that winning will be able to uh, go back to uh, being normal again soon. Yeah, if everybody would just obey and keep the mask on, we would That's probably right. get it all under control. Please listen uh, to what you got to do out there. Right? 100%. <laughs> all right. Thank you. This show can also be heard on Barnburner Network on its 122 platforms. The Her Network is a part of the Barnburner Network, Inc. Please check out barnburner.ca for all the news and programming. Barnburner. Watch it. Hear it. Read it, download it, live it. It's the Tanya Mulling Show here. Catch the same time, same place next week. Have a blessed evening, all. Take care.